All right, four collectors trade night next Sunday. May as well do a preview video. So uh, right now I, I I just figured out I gotta I'm gonna have to do one non sports and probably one baseball and basketball. Um, I'm gonna have to do two separate. So um, just got a lot of stuff and all this stuff uh, I'm gonna be listing for sale. So this is one last opportunity for anybody to uh, to trade for it. Um, without it being listed anyway, I can always take stuff down obviously. And if anybody wants to look at anything I have listed for sale, the links are on my, uh, my YouTube channel page for my eBay account and my, um, COMC account as well. ComC account. Um, if you want to see what I have listed for sale there, all that stuff's available as well. Um, all it is is a click of a button just to take it down. ComC stuff I got to have sent back obviously, but, um, if anybody wants to trade for any of that stuff, just let me know. So. Just a uh, link away to see the inventory. So, um, anyway, I'm going to start off with non-sport. And, you know, I may as well kind of pan around the room. My, my whole house is still not even anything but in shambles. I've been here since November. I haven't even unpacked yet. But I got Star Wars stuff, too. I got the old toys. I just kind of don't really know. If, I, I, I'd just rather trade them for card stuff, honestly, or sports stuff. So, I got an ad at I got a Millennium Falcon uh, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, ATST, uh, Bespin, uh, uh, guard, uh, vehicle. And I got some play sets as well. I got a whole bunch of figures, action figures. Um, no weapons. I don't have any of the weapons, but all the vehicles. And I believe most of the play sets seem to have all the pieces. So, um, all right, let's start off here though. We'll start off with the big ones as in gigantic. Uh, this is the who 1975 Panini Panini picture pop. Um, that's the who band in the seven SGC seven. As you can see, you got, uh, you know, Roger Daltrey and uh, Pete Townsend and the other two guys. I cannot remember their names right now. I'm not a who fan though. So I don't, I don't, I just know the two guys anyway. Um, that's available before it goes up for sale. Should have been up for sale a long time ago, honestly. But I was hoping to get the stuff in in a trade night, so just to give any anybody an opportunity. I don't I don't listen to these guys or or collect them. So, and then here's the Roger Daltrey solo and a six. See there, kinda. These are tough. They're flimsy, you know, flimsy little. Uh, stickers so the packs themselves are flimsy too so i pulled these from a pack myself and then i got a gladys knight and the pips i just thought this would be at least an eight that's why i sent it in you know now that i look at the, the centering wouldn't have allowed it to be i don't think no it could have been an eight anyway they saw something else i didn't see so got a six on that one gladys knight and the pips all right um and some of these are just kind of like whatever, you know. Uh, I'm putting them up for sale soon, so I'll throw them out there real quick. But uh, 89 OPG Ghostbusters. Got uh, Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Sigourney Weaver, Ernie Hudson, all of them in there. That's in an 8. And these are a lot tougher to grade than you, than you would imagine. Uh, 1984. I'm going to try not to stray too far from the 80s. Um, 84 Fleer V TV show. This is Michael Ironside. This is the first card I've seen of him. I don't know if it's his first card or not, but this is an 8.5. These are real tough. Um, right out of the pack, obviously. But that's pack pulled as well, 8.5. Now here are a couple of these. I got uh, the Robert England. This is Freddy Krueger's first card that I could find. From the same set, 1984 Fleer V, the TV series. Got one in an eight. One of these might be on eBay. I don't know for sure, so I'm, I've got to be careful. The 8.5 might be on eBay right now. I don't recall. But I've got both of those. If anybody wants one. Um, and now we're getting into the 70s and back. All right. Uh, and then I got a, this one, the 78 Superman Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor in a six. Real sharp. Just OC, I guess. Uh, enough. Well, it's OC left and right and up top and bottom, so I don't think they could have given it a 7. Anyway. Then I also have... I, I think I have four of these 7s. 
So I was getting these for like a buck a piece, but you know, I don't know what they're worth. Probably no more than 20 bucks, but um, two really sharp sevens. Now this one, the grader does not understand the up and down centering. This should have been an eight in my opinion. This one, yeah, the centering says says it all. And I think there's a kind of a bubble on it. I don't, you know, the bubbles on the surface don't bother me because to me, that's just part of the wood pulp. It's a big, big deal. So if I can find cards like that cheap all day, I'll do it. And this one is uh, the Lex Luthor Wants You, Gene Hackman. Doesn't mention him as Gene Hackman on this one, but it's a real clean copy of the, the Red Series. Um, we got, uh, 1978 Close Encounters tops, Steven Spielberg, first card I could find of him, and this one's in a seven. Got a couple more copies of this as well, but not graded. No. Um, 1978 Donruss, uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. This is Aerosmith in a 7.5. Very, very, very hard card to find. In any kind of decent shape, even straight out of the box. I bought multiple boxes of them, and they're just impossible to find centered. Must have been the positioning on the um, sheet or something. But anyway, the best I can tell so far, that's Aerosmith's first card, and that's a 7.5. It's a very high grade for that card. Very, very hard to get that card in a good grade. Um, uh, Star Wars, uh, Harrison Ford, this one has two creases on it. I have no idea where they came from, but they're here now. So, um, was hoping for a seven on it, but with the creases, that's high as it could go. So no idea the story on that, how they got there, what happened. I have no clue, but they're there now, but that's a four. And, uh, that's the Harrison Ford as Han Solo number 58, which I believe is the most important solo card in the set in, the, in, in all the series. Um, 6.5 on this one. You got the stain there. That stain's actually kind of common. I got a couple copies with that stain. And, uh, the OC, there's no way it could do any better than a 7, regardless. But, that's a key card, so, um, it's got some value. And then, I got a copy in the 7 as well. So, this one, I think I was, I was hoping it would eke out an 8, just because it's, it's really sharp. It's obviously a pack fresh card. It's just, they're kind of, I don't know why they're so uh, kind of brutal on that, on that grade on that one. I actually don't know if I agree with that. That one, that one would have done better at PSA. Um, now we got an old peachy, a whole bunch of old peachies that I bought. And I was just getting these, um, picking them up raw and uh, grading them. The C3PO and R2D2 old peachy. It's the orange series. Pretty, pretty decent shape for that one. And here's a bunch of um, George Lucas cards in the Opeachy. So uh, orange series, you got George Lucas sitting there. So first, first George Lucas card. This is a pretty nice copy of it though. Got a little rough corner there, but wasn't trying to hide that. Anyway, grade grade says what it is. Uh and two more George Lucas. You got him and directing the Cantina. Seen there, and it's also one of seven. And this one I feel like is the most important George Lucas card. I I think I have another seven I'm keeping from Yo Peachy. So this one's available. George Lucas and Greedo. And you got uh Peter Cushing here. This is nowhere near Peter Cushing's first card or rookie card or whatever you will. This it's just nowhere even close. I think he's got something in the sixties. Or maybe even the fifties. Um but this is a sweet cop this, this is a pretty sweet copy. It's got the old peachy cut and it's OC, but man, it's so 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 sharp. Such a nice copy of this card. And it it actually to me it destroys all the other sevens I have that are old peachies. Um I don't think it could eke out an eight with PSA, but that's a nice copy of that card. It really is. Um, and then you got Cushing again here, and this one's in an eight. It's a real fine example of a of a uh, orange uh, series. I don't re recall third series maybe for OPG. I'd like to have the um, Harrison Ford 
in a in an eight or higher there, but I, I haven't picked one. I, I've only got a six right now. So of the a PSA six of the uh, orange Harrison Ford, and then here's just the the Jawas taking R two D two, and you got C three PO in the background, a couple other characters. Just a real clean, nice centered copy, and, and an eight. I don't know what kind of value any of these have. I don't even know if there there'll be any cops even slightly available. So 8.5, um, little peachy again, and you get R2 and C3PO there, but it's a high grade for an OPG. Um, and then this one, this is probably my favorite of the bunch, uh, that weren't Harrison Ford. Um, yeah. So the red series, man, you, you just don't see them this this clean. Got a little touch of white in the corner, a little bit of chipping, but they're just never this clean or this centered. So I just bought it. It was a decent decent price, and you know, threw a couple more bucks into it and turned it into an eight. It's nice, cool cool uh, picture there. Be a nice card for a Vader fan, and that's a very hard grade for that set. Uh this has got a man. You know, if I'd have noticed that, I'd have definitely cleaned it. That's a bummer. Um, this is a sweet, sweet card. This is David Carradine, um, Kane from uh, Kung Fu, Kill Bill as well. I didn't notice the wax on there. I'd have gotten that wax off with the, uh, you know, dress sock or a pantyhose or something. That card easily would have been an eight without that wax. The centering on that is is even SGC worthy centering. I might actually keep this. I'm not. You know, I don't have any. Re I'm not like. Carradine fan. I don't even care for the Kill Bill movies, actually. I don't care for Kung Fu. I don't care for... <laughs> I actually don't think there's anything I like him in. Kill Bill's all right. And there's a few things I like him in. I just can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. But I might hold on to that one. But if anybody wants it, let me know. I didn't know that was the only thing holding it back from an 8. But then I have this one as well with Kane and his master here. Um, T with the master. And that, that one came back an 8. And that's just really, really, really nice copy of that so that's another young David David Carradine there alright did I do those Hackmans yeah I did the Hackmans alright now we're getting into the 60s some and yeah we'll do the we got some Bruce Lee some Bruce Lee going here we got some 1966 Green Hornets playing cards Kato New new cards or something was the name of this. I can't remember. Um, that's in a seven, 1966 card in a seven. So that's an early Bruce Lee card in a seven. Can't uh, can't complain about that one. I'm keeping one. I think I, I have a I have one of his Donruss in a nine that I'm going to hold on to. And this one came back really well, except he's got his head turned. But that's another early Bruce Lee card, if not Bruce Lee, you know, first card, 1966 in an eight point five. So that turned out really nice, obviously. All right, let's get this in the right spot. All right, and then I got these two as well. I picked them up on Com C, and Com C listed them as Bruce Lee Kato, but I can't tell if that's Kato. I, th I don't think that's Kato. I think that's Green Hornet, and. These are both labeled as Green Hornet, King of Spades, King of Clubs. So I might, I don't, I don't know. Those, I think those are Green Hornet. I don't think it's got though, but they're both. It's hard to tell because they're wearing a the mask. You wouldn't think it'd be that hard to tell, but for some reason, I, I think it's Green Hornet. Anyway, another uh, Bruce Lee. That's him right there. So he's got his mask on, so it's hard to see his face all the way, obviously, but still, 1966 Bruce Lee card in a seven. Got to have some sort of value. Looks good in the tux. And we got some Dutch gums. I pulled all these out of packs. And we got a Anne Margaret and Pebbles Flintstone in the seven. These are like mini Tiffany cards. They're super glossy. All right. And we got a Henry and George Jetson. Henry Orbit. I don't know what he's talking about there. Orbit, George Jessen, I don't know. Um, another pack pulled those. These are all, I pulled these all out of packs. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, Connie Frabos, Swedish actor, singer. 
actress singer. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I want to say she's still with us. That came back a six. I was expecting that to be an eight. Um, it doesn't have any staining in the. Oh, I see. I see. It's the ink blot on the front by the HB cost it. Otherwise, that that card is, could have been an eight or a nine. Wilma Flintstone in a seven. Really nice copy of that. And got another one, Wilma, in a seven. If anybody's a Flintstone fan or has a wife that is or kids or something, I don't know. Just throwing it out there. And then this one was a, it was, this was the front card in the pack. So it ended up a three. It's got surface indentions and issues. and But that's Fred Flintstone and Margaret and Barney Rubble. So Anne Margaret's a uh, Canadian uh, icon. And evidently she was even in the cartoon of Flintstone. So um, I don't recall what, what she was famous for other than being a Canadian actress. I don't, I don't recall what roles or anything. I, I know she was obviously in the Flintstones. Um, and we got a Swedish Muppet Show, Floyd Janice and Zoot from the band. I was looking for Dr. Teeth, but I found this one and it was just a really, really nice copy, obviously. Um, ended up a nine. So. That's available. I'm not, I'm not super attached to that one. I'm a, I think I'm going to keep my animal and I'm definitely not parting with my, uh, Statler and Waldorf. Um, 1968 Tops Laughing, Rowan and Martin's Laughing. That's a really early Goldie Hawn card. And 1968 coming back into seven is obviously a pretty darn decent grade, especially with SGC. So, um, that turned out well, but that's, that's available also. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. All right, some of the these would be some of the highlights. Um, David Bowie, nineteen seventy two, Monty Gum Pop Star stickers, and this is the dots variation. Some of these are have a felt finish. This is just kind of a sticker, plain sticker. Um, that's obviously was a fresh pull from somebody, but that came back a seven. So there he is, in Ziggy Stardust form. I assume. All right, and this one we got—we got an early Ozzy card here. Uh, well, the years are always nug or are, are always debatable on these. Now I have a different one with him sitting in the throne, and it's the same band and everything, and it's. I have it on Com C right now, and they just relisted it as 1974. So evidently, they found out somewhere along the line that one's 1974. Well, this one's in, in a nine for 1978. I think this is the highest graded of this card. So we don't know if it's 1978 or what, but all I know is Ozzy looks young. Looks very young. So, and I'm not an Ozzy fan. I, I mean, put on some good music. I, I would say over the years some catchy stuff, but so I'm not I'm not attached to it. It's gonna go up for sale. Um, let's see here, and then there's this one as well. This is the 1972. There's only one earlier card than this, and it's really kind of like a milk cap or something from like Lord Nielsen's something or other. Uh, I was aware of that when I bought this, but to me, this is the most important. Well, eh, people can argue it is just because this is more like a card. But when you're with the non-sports stuff and the early stuff and, you know, pre-war stuff, you know, whatever's first is first, honestly. So I don't know how anybody could argue this is more important, really. So I guess I can't and I can if I want to, I guess, but I don't have much of an argument. But um, this is obviously probably easier to get. But there is this is the second earliest thing card of Ozzy that I, I am aware of besides that Lord Nielsen's milk cap thing or whatever it was. I don't know if I can get that sitting there. Oh, might as well just put it up in front of that one. And then uh, I got I got four of these actually. I have two two of these and a nine as well. I'm just not sure what to do with the nines yet. Um, 
but I have the 1966-68 Dutch gum, The Who. And uh, they had the earliest cards of theirs I could find. I have four copies of this. So this one is seven. And then I had another copy in eight. I have the two nines as well that I'm holding on to for now. So obviously a pretty nice copy of that. All right, and we're winding down now with, uh, you know, I might do football at the end here too or a couple of hockey cards just to maybe just do all the baseball and basketball into one. Um, let's see here. All right, what do we have left? Well, okay, so more Dutch gums. I pulled these as well. Um, I honestly wish I would have sent these to PSA now. I feel like they could have been sevens. But um, we got two of the Rolling Stones, and obviously that's Mick Jagger. Um, 1968 Dutch gum. I don't, or 65, pardon me. I don't believe they, there's anything earlier that I have found not pack pulled anyway from uh, the Rolling Stones. So we got two of them in a six. I think this one's a little nicer. Um, but this one's just it's just too big. It's not that it's off center too bad. It's just too big. They both they both have ghosting on the back. Um, or else they degraded. Uh, higher I still I still do not agree with that grade actually <clears throat> but got two sixes they're both available um the right card popped up and last one I don't think I'm gonna trade this but if anybody has to have it I think I'm gonna hold on to this the uh, Clint Eastwood 1962 Dutch And a seven. It honestly looks more like a nine. Doesn't even have ghosting or staining on the back. I had it up for uh, sale on ComC for a while, but it's probably overpriced. And I'm either going to try to sell it on eBay or hold on to it for a while. Um, if the right card popped up for it, I'd, I'd be open to trading for it. But um, I only basically collect Hall of Fame rookie cards. I'll do some non-sports stuff if it's high grade and somebody I collect, but there's not very many people I collect, famous people-wise. Uh, famous people autographs I'd be open to, um, but mostly I want uh, Hall of Famer graded rookie cards, uh, basically any sport, four major sports mainly, and uh, so I'm kind of hard to trade with. Or um, there's also a handful of... Uh, Ultra modern cards that I want, like uh, I need like a Jose Altuve black parallel from 2011 update, either the black parallel parallel or the Hope Diamond parallel, and uh, same with Freddie Freeman from 2011. I need a uh, 2013 tops Manny Machado, either the camo pink or black parallels, or maybe even the sapphire out of 25. Um, I just need, uh, uh, tops flagship parallel rookie card of a handful of guys that are current and back, um, up till 03, 04. Um, and that's about it for, for modern stuff. Uh, autograph rookie cards I like as well, especially if they're true autograph rookie cards, like a triple threads, that's actually numbered part of the set. So if somebody had like a, you know. Oh, I don't know. Triple Threads rookie card of uh, wouldn't be Juan Soto. You know, I can't even think of anybody, but just I have several of myself as well. But um, I do know I need a 2012 Tops Triple Threads Jose Altuve autograph. And that's not his rookie, but that's one of the rare non-rookie cards I'm looking for. Anyway, uh, graded Hall of Famer rookies is what I'm looking for. If anybody wants anything, we can try to figure something else out and one way or the other, and if you want to buy any of this stuff, uh, let me know as well. I'm willing to sell offline. So thanks. God bless.